Hi Year 12, I hope you are well. This is going to be our last lesson of the academic year and what a strange year it has been but you have done so so well. In today's lesson we are still on the topic of sampling but we have a fun um, interactive lesson whereby you're going to apply your knowledge of sampling to sweets and it's important that you have your packet of sweets which I ask you to buy um, for this lesson. So what I want you to do is bring out your mixed coloured sweets for this lesson. So you might have bought Skittles, Gummy Bear, Smarties and so on. I'm expecting to see submissions of your own interaction with your sweets for this lesson. And of course, throughout this lesson, I will show you how to um, apply your knowledge of sampling using the sweets that you purchase. Your task is going to be to experiment with the different methods of sampling using your chosen sweets as your participants. I will go through an example with my Haribo um, golden gummy bears. And for the worksheet that I'm going to give to you, please answer the questions which has the, the stats for my gummy bears. And then you can do the same for your own set of sweets and perhaps get your family involved, get your siblings involved, get someone else involved, Snapchat involved. Let them know that you are learning about sampling with sweets and then you can eat the sweets afterwards. OK, so I want you to tip out all your sweets and once you tip them out, I want you to group them by colour because you're going to need to count how many of each sweet is of a particular colour. So as you can see me in the video, I've pulled out my gummy bears and I'm about to arrange them into their colour categories. OK, so I may have eaten one or two gummy bears, so RIP to those ones, there's a gap here. <laughs> But once you have pulled out your sweets, so if you're working with Smarties, Skittles or Harry Bow gummy bears like I am, make sure that you have put them out into their various um, colour groupings. And Harry Bow have done a great job at identifying what the flavours are, but we're not going to go by flavours with this. We're li literally just going to go by the colours. So I've got red, yellow, green. I'm going to call this peach because I've got a deeper orange here and then I've got clear. What I'm going to do is I'm going to list out these categories and next to the categories, I'm going to put the number of gummy bears that are red, the number of gummy bears that are yellow and so on. Once I have my totals, I'm going to add everything up and that will give me the number of gummy bears that I have in my population minus the two that I've eaten. Um, <laughs> and once you've done that, it's important that you calculate the proportion. And the way you're going to do that is you are going to provide me with the percentage of gummy bears or if you're working with Skittles or if you're working with Smarties, the percentage that are red, the percentage that are blue, the percentage that are green. And you know the way to do that is simply get the number that are red divided by the total population and multiply that by 100 to get your percentage. So have a go at doing that. The first one has been done for you. So the percentage of red gummy bears in my population was 18%. And I've put out the working out there so that if you're unsure about how to calculate percentages, you can use that as a guide. Have a go at calculating it for the rest of the colour groups. So you should now have your percentages for each colour group and that should be in the table in blue. Make sure that you also fill out the worksheet for all of those percentages. You're gonna to need to use that as a reference point throughout this PowerPoint. So if you haven't done that, you better pause the, the video and do it now. Okay, so in order to conduct a random sample of 20 sweets, I've put all the sweets back into the Haribo packet. Don't worry guys, it's only me that will be eating the Haribo, hence I can mix up, mix up with my hands. Um, and I'm gonna pull out 20 sweets. And then the next thing that we need to do is we need to count how many are of each colour. So you can see the figures on the screen for each colour of my random sample of 20 sweets. I had seven red, two clear, two yellow, one green, six peach and two orange. And what I need you to do is calculate the percentage of each colour from that random sample. So when you're calculating your percentage, for example, for the red category, you would need to do 7 divided by 20 multiplied by 100 and that will give you the percentage of red sweets within my random sample. And then you're going to compare the percentage of red sweets in the random sample with the percentage of red sweets in the entire population. You will do that for each 
category. And that way, as you're comparing, you're going to see whether or not your random sample is representative of the entire population. Okay, next for the opportunity sample, I'm going to tip out the first 25 suites and they are going to represent the suites that are ready and available to participate in my research. So let's tip it out. Street beat, what else? Go. Okay, so for our opportunity sample, we have three, six, seven red ones, three clear ones, three greens, three oranges, five peaches, and four yellows. So I'm going to pop those into the table, and you're going to have a go at calculating their proportions, and you're going to see whether or not your opportunity sample reflects the target population by comparing the proportions when you calculate the percentages. So there's a lot of percentage calculation calculations, but I hope it gives you good practice. Now for volunteer sampling, I couldn't really get my gummy bears to pretend to be volunteers. <laughs> so what I've done is I've made up some figures about the most willing gummy bears that were willing to participate in my research. And they are the green, the yellow and the peach. Red, clear and orange, they were not having it. So what I want you to do is calculate the percentage for those that were willing to volunteer and contrast your calculations with the um, percentages of the entire population. And that way you'll be able to see whether or not your volunteer sample is representative of the broader population. And just to further strengthen why we're conducting all of these percentages, because it, it stresses this idea that actually there are certain types of sampling that are more representative of the broader population than others. And engaging in a task like this enables you to see that in a nice, fun and practical way. Okay, so for systematic sampling, what we need to do is we need to pour out all of our sweets and get them into a line. I'm going to try and do this as quick as possible. I might speed this part up. Hey. Street beat, what else? Go. So what we are going to do is we are going to go through each row and we are going to pick every third gummy bear and every third gummy bear will be part of our population until we get to 20. So... Hey. What else? Go. So we have our sample, our systematic sample of 20. I'm just going to quickly show you guys. They're here. And we are going to see how many are red, how many are clear, how many are, are orange, and so on. And I'll put the numbers on the PowerPoint for you to calculate the proportions. So you can see the number of each category for each of those suites in our systematic sample. So have a go at calculating the percentage for the red, clear, yellow, green, peach and orange in our systematic sample and compare that percentage with the percentages that occur in the entire population. Remember that when you're calculating the percentage for the systematic sample, you are doing, for example, for the red group, 5 divided by 20 multiplied by 100. This is because in our systematic sample, the total amount of sweets in that sample was 20. Yeah, so have a go at doing that. Okay, so for stratified sampling, we are going to do the reverse. We need to use your calculations of the percentages of each colour group in the whole population. So we know the one for red. Remember, I'm not giving you the rest because you have already done that. So we know the one for red, we know that red gummy bears occur 18% of the time in the broader population. Therefore, if we wanted our sample to be stratified, we want it to be representative of the occurrence of these subgroups. So these colours will be our subgroups, will be our strata. We want it to be reflective of that. So we are hoping that of our 20 suites, 18% of our 20 suites will be red. Yeah. So what I need you to do is you're going to need to calculate what is 18% of 20. 
And that way you'll be able to determine how many of those sweets you need to include in your sample for your sample to be representative of the population in terms of stratified sampling. You will do that for each of the color groups. Yeah. So I put here a nice um, example. These bullet points here give you a nice example of how you're going to calculate this for each of the color groups. It should be very, very straightforward. And it, again, you should end up with your percentages literally being the same as the entire population because your stratified sample is the type of sampling that ensures that your your sample is representative of the broader population. So if your percentages are going to be the same across each table for each category, the only difference will be in the number of sweets that you would have for each of those categories. So like I've put in this worked example, if 18% of the sweets in the broader population are red, then in our stratified sample, 18% of the 20 sweets that we decided to include in our sample must be red. 18% of 20 gives us 3.6, yeah? 3.6. That means that the amount of sweets that we need to include in our in our research that need to be read will have to be four because we're going to round it up to the nearest whole number. I hope this makes sense. So you will do the same for the rest of the categories. Well done for keeping up with me. Make sure that at the end of this lesson, you submit photos of your own sweet sampling method in action and make sure you complete the sweet sampling worksheet each table in that worksheet must be completed so that you are displaying your knowledge of sampling, but also basic math skills such as calculating percentages and also being able to compare figures and come to a conclusion as a result. So well done. You have been absolutely fabulous during this remote learning. Those of you who are behind on work, you need to catch up. You probably won't even hear this because you, you miss so many tasks, but this isn't to throw shade. This is to let you know that when we get back to school, myself and Miss Smith will be on your case. So those of you who have been on point throughout, just let those lazy ones know that we're going to be on their case because we want you to do well. And we don't want anyone to, to not fulfill their, their full potential. But well done and have a lovely summer.